Guys, I was fully intending not to do this video today, but here we are. I just got home from work and changed. I'm polishing off this Mountain Valley sparkling spring water and canceled my plans after work so that I could come home and film this video. It's just been fresh on my mind because today is August 1st. I don't know when I'm gonna edit this and have it up, but I did an Instagram post this morning showing the August Beauty Heroes box, which as you now know, is Mahalo's The Bean Mask. On the sidekick is this little mask application brush, but we will be getting to all of that. I did a post in lieu of having a video go up today just because I didn't have time. The uh, information for me to film the video to have it up today was not available in time. So I did a post and several things happened today. One, I got some really good questions on the Instagram post, and so I'm gonna answer them in today's video, but I thought maybe that's sort of like a good um, practice moving forward is like on the first of every month, I can do a post, and if you have questions, then I'll just answer them in the review that I do like that day or that week or something. It would obviously mean that the video won't go up right on the first, but I, you know, if you guys are sort of waffling and deciding whether or not you want to subscribe, uh, it could be, I guess, fun for me to answer your questions. So I am going to answer the three or four, I think there's only like three or four questions that came through in the comments on that Instagram post. This is the third box that Beauty Heroes has done with Mahalo. The first one was featuring the Pele mask. That was actually before I started working with Beauty Heroes. So I have tried that, that product independent of Beauty Heroes. It doesn't really work on my skin. It's one of the only products from Mahalo's range that I really like didn't get on with like at all. And then they featured the Indigo Balm, I believe last year, or it's been over a year at this point. So this is now the third box. I will say right out of the gate that the Bean and the Vitality Elixir are my two favorite products from Mahalo. The Petal would have been in there too, but if you watched my recent KonMari declutter video, I talked extensively about, not extensively, but I gave my thoughts on the Petal. So if you're curious to hear about that, go check out that video. I hope that's the right place where that gets linked. So the Bean is one of my favorite Mahalo products. It's also one of my favorite masks. I have a sort of a long-standing relationship with this mask, and this is now the third jar of it that I've had. I was sent the first generation of the Bean. Now also, unlike the Petal, this formulation has stayed consistent, at least in my experience. It hasn't changed at all from batch to batch. So. I was sent a jar of the bean when it was just a limited edition release with the petal uh, Valentine's Day 2015, I think. I adored it. I raved about it then and I used up the whole jar. And I was sent another jar by Mahalo as one of their sort of, I guess I'm a Mahalo brand ambassador. I don't know. It's sort of like, <laughs> I don't really know what I am to be honest, but I, I think I am or I'm, I'm something. I'm also sweating and I feel like I'm gonna get increasingly glowy throughout this video. So they sent me, um, this looks like a, the size that is an empty product of mine is actually a smaller size than what came in the Beauty Heroes box. But I recently used all of this up and this was actually in my June and July favorites video. Sort of a coincidence that it's now also the August Beauty Heroes product. Uh, I really had been loving this mask intensely during uh, June and July, so that's why it was in my favorites. So I have a long-standing experience with this product and I can sort of tell you what I've learned about it along the way. Now, just to get this out of the way, there was a little bit of a kerfuffle or... Uh, I don't... I have so many thoughts on when this happens on social media. When someone posts something sort of quite... I don't know hyperbolic, bombastic, appealing to a certain kind of like rhetoric to raise an issue about something, anything. And I see this happening in sort of the beauty space all the time. There was a post on Instagram today, I got tagged in it a bunch of times. To be honest, I didn't even have like really the time or inclination to read the full post and all like 200 comments that were on it. A Beauty Heroes, I think she's a Beauty Heroes subscriber. Basically this post was about how several beauty products in the last year had developed mold on them. I think the person was referencing one of the Uma masks and the Bottega Organica product, which I knew 
had like a widespread mold issue. The very first jar of the bean I ever had did develop mold spores on it. It's actually literally in all of the years that I've been using Eco Beauty products, the only product that has ever happened to me too. I'll tell you what I did. I did not panic or freak out. I scooped out the mold and kind of like the whole top layer of the product and I promptly put the mask in the refrigerator along with the petal and I have successfully been using this product ever since with no mold and no problems and very good skin results. Now, that is in no way to, and I also, I never had a mold issue with the Bottega Organica product and I ne have never had a mold issue with the Uma masks. I have had an issue with the Uma masks drying out over time as well as the Josh Rosebrook Cacao Antioxidant Mask, which is a very strong comparator to the bean, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. This also has dried out on me, so it's almost like I have the opposite problem of mold growth. It's that my products seem to dry out. But that being said, you know, yeah, there there are there is sort of, I guess, sometimes a trade-off with preservative issues and mold growth and things like that. It's very easily remedied, to be honest, by keeping certain products in the refrigerator, by keeping your stash a manageable size so that you get through it. And I mean, I'm not one to tell anybody how to spend or use their money or, you know, how many beauty products is too many for you, but I mean, unless you're a beauty blogger and you're testing tons and tons of products, you probably don't need to have like so many masks in rotation that you're not getting through them expediently. Though obviously I know that this is, you know, a huge issue for all of us that at one time or another have fallen prey to overconsumption and accumulating too much stuff and getting overwhelmed by our stashes. But these products do have expiration dates. I have also used Mahalo products well past their expiration dates and not had problems. So, I mean, I think the user experience with the expiration of Eco Beauty products and things like drying out or mold growth is very individual and I don't think that it's a reason to necessarily write off a brand, certainly not to write off Beauty Heroes. I think what I saw in this post was a bunch of like, I can't believe Beauty Heroes did XYZ. I mean, like I said, I didn't read the full post or engage in all of that because frankly, I'm just sort of like, I just sort of like don't really want to get involved, although I realize I'm sort of getting involved by being on a bit of a soapbox right now, but I, I wanted to share my thoughts on this because I've known Beauty Heroes to only be so exceptional and above anybody's expectations with respect to customer service that it's very hard for me to imagine them delivering poor customer service. You know, I guess if they did, I'm sure that there's an explanation and it would be very quickly remedied. So those are my thoughts on all of that. And now why don't we just get into reviewing the products before I literally like melt on camera in front of you. <laughs> so the bean, why don't I open up the brand new one so you can see it. <sighs> Smells incredible. It looks like this. So this mask is in a base of, let me check, raw honey, raw cacao. It has a very long ingredient list and you guys know how much I strongly dislike reading ingredient lists, but some of the sort of superpower ingredients in this are the charcoal, cacao, carrot seed oil. This has green coffee bean oil, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite ingredients. Vera uses it in her anti-aging face oil and it is just to die. Hibiscus, honey, sandalwood, sea buckthorn, turmeric, watermelon. Um, this does also have astaxanthin in it, which is an ingredient that I have in the past expressed weird, inexplicable reservations about. It's one of those ingredients that just, I, for lack of a better word, it just energetically feels strange to me. It hasn't prevented me from using this product. Um, the other two products that I have known it's been in are the Maya Chia Super Couple, and the True Nature Botanicals Moisture Mask. I believe it was in both of those, and neither of those products worked for me. I don't think it was necessarily only because of the astaxanthin, but the astaxanthin is not an issue for me in this, and I just kind of am like, I'll deal with it, I guess. I, I have no rational reason why that ingredient strikes a weird chord with me. 
So there you have it. This is an antioxidant mask meant to detoxify, exfoliate, firm, and provide glow. It also has ginger, clove, and cinnamon to stimulate circulation, scented with vanilla, honey, cardamom, and dark chocolate. It's really, um, yeah, I mean, predominantly I smell like a complex spiced cacao. When I very first tried this product, it reminded me of like a really decadent chocolate pudding like on the face. I also have demoed this in previous videos. I'm pretty sure in the one vlog that I've done to date, and there will be more coming at some point, I think I had this on my face in that vlog, which I'll link for you. But apparently this formula took over a year and a half to perfect by Marina, who I haven't even mentioned. She's the founder of Mahalo. It's a Hawaiian brand. She's based on uh, Kauai, I think. I really love and respect Marina. She's a brand, again, that I've been working with for quite a while. I have a whole brand review on Mahalo from when I first discovered them. And I just, I feel like I've been talking about their products for a really long time at this point. She micro batches everything. She's hyper attuned to sourcing and local ingredients and getting potent, you know, sort of biodynamic, organic, wild crafted sorts of ingredients. I feel like this is, you know, just very par for the course with the integrity of the ingredients that Beauty Heroes, of the brands that Beauty Heroes chooses to work with. Then I thought this was an interesting um, sidekick choice. I'll be perfectly honest, it, it probably wouldn't have been my first choice. I wish that they had included a sample of the Vitality Elixir, actually, because that's one of my favorite face serums, and I would just love for like everybody to try it. The reason I've never sort of conceptually gotten on board with a mask application brush is that First of all, I kind of like using my fingers. I sort of like being in touch with my skin in that way. But also it's just another thing to clean. And that's always sort of put me off. But when I had dinner with Jeannie in San Francisco uh, in May, she told me how amazing she thinks this is and how you know every beauty aficionado, someone that loves a good beauty ritual, how everyone needs a really beautiful mask application brush. So I, I think it's a unique curation with the mask. Would it have been my personal first choice for a sidekick? Perhaps not, but I might be surprised. I, I really enjoy when Beauty Heroes surprises me. So this is valued at 20 and the bean is valued at 80. So it's $100 worth of product in this month's box. So apparently the reason it's called the bean, I actually never knew this, is because it has a three bean trifecta in it, cacao, coffee, and vanilla. I love it. Okay, so the instructions say that it's suitable for most skin types to enjoy up to three times a week. I personally think that's way too much. Apply a generous layer over slightly damp skin, avoid your eyes and lips, uh, soften with a few drops of water or toner. I don't think you need to do that either, really. This is a mask that doesn't um, dry down or get hard at all. It stays moist on the skin the whole time it's on. Okay, so they say if you have very sensitive skin or you're using the bean for the first time, leave it on for up to seven minutes. The very first time I used the bean, I left it on for 45 minutes. <laughs> and it, I mean, I was totally fine with it. And they say otherwise allow the bean to nourish your skin for 20 to 30 minutes. I've left it on for up to an hour and it's been fine. When you're ready to remove the mask, add warm water, massage to loosen and gently exfoliate. I always take it off in the shower, otherwise it's just like a huge, huge mess. Okay, so I've already been giving you kind of some of my uh, personal experience tips with this. I can only speak to it on my skin, although in sort of other fe feedback I've gotten from other people with different skin types, everyone seems to respond really well to this. I've actually never heard of anyone having a bad reaction to this or it being too much or anything. I will say the only part of my face I don't like to use this on is my cheeks. But again, this is going to be so individual to you. I am normal, mostly normal skin type, but I treat my skin as sort of micro terrains, if you will. From facials I've had, I've learned that the skin on my cheeks is quite thin, so I actually do have, I tend to get quite flushed there. You can, if you really look and sort of pull the skin, I do have some small, like broken capillaries. So I don't like to do any kind of like serious masking or intense exfoliation on my cheeks. So I will just 
really apply this like through my t-zone up my jawline basically literally everywhere but my cheeks what I do when I'm masking with this is I will apply a thick layer of a moisturizing mask or even a balm like I've been using the Josh Rosebrook Vital Balm Cream on my cheeks as sort of like a moisturizing, um, nourishing mask with the bean everywhere else. I'll leave it on anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour. For me, it is sort of like a longer the better product. I don't often leave it on for like quite that long. I would say like 30 to 40 minutes is my ideal. I don't like to do this more than once a week, but I don't really like to mask any more than once max twice a week. I'm really quite minimal with my skincare. I have become that way. I've really, I guess, just sort of scaled back in how much I do to my skin. Twice a week is plenty for me, but I tend to do a midweek exfoliation and like a flash mask, and then I do a much de more dedicated, longer mask treatment on a Sunday. I mean, it's fantastic. It's up there with me in terms of effect that it gives my skin with my other favorites like Osmia Adzuki mask. Now Precious Skin Elixir Sterling Honey Polish is another favorite. This is more more supercharged than that, I think you're really gonna like it. I mean, I've just seen great results. I think it's gently exfoliating, hydrating, brightening, toning. It's kind of an all-in-one. That's how I've always described this mask. It's not just one thing. I feel like it does so much. So why don't I now bring up the questions that people asked on Instagram because they're sort of related to the actual product itself and my experience with it. Okay, so someone did mention the Josh Rosebrook mask which I'll quickly talk about. So I, I do like both of these. I will say that I like the bean a little bit better. I think what honestly what I would say about Josh Rosebrook antioxidant cacao is that this is best when it's very fresh and I just found that it really dried out on me. It became very hard to spread, wouldn't really adhere to the skin. And it was very much just that the formula had aged because when I first had this mask, I really liked it. So maybe I should have kept it in the fridge, but I don't know if that would have hardened it even sort of further. I actually found that this one turned up a little bit more heat in my skin, um, and it just wasn't as sort of like smoothing or evening. It was more nourishing. It didn't quite feel like as active, but I, I mean, I did really enjoy it. They smell quite similar. Um, this one is definitely kind of a more pudding-like consistency where this is more of like a thick clay-like consistency. So if you had to make me choose, I do think that this one is more of like a multitasker, but I mean, this one is, you know, really nice too. Obviously good enough for beauty heroes to choose it, so. Someone asked, is the bean a clarifying detox mask or is it more for moisturizing? Honestly, it's both, and that's why I think it's so unique. It kind of straddles both of those types of masks for me personally. Have you tried JR's Cacao? Yes, just talked about it. Or May Lindstrom's Problem Solver? Yes, I have. I don't really like it. I don't really like May Lindstrom pro products in general. I think that they're very overpriced for the effect that they have delivered to my skin. Now that's very personal to me. I've tried pretty much everything in the range at one point or another. The problem solver actually to me was very similar to Mahalo's Pele mask and I just, those masks don't, they don't work for me personally. Someone said, isn't that product the one that changed the ingredients and you prefer the old one? No, that would be the petal. Is it drying? No, and I don't find it to be drying at all. So if you're someone that's been sort of averse to clay or charcoal masks and worried that they'll be drying, I think that this is like a great place to start. Although again, just beware of the more sensitive parts of your face and maybe do a very thin layer or avoid it as I do with my cheeks. Okay, that's it. So there weren't really that many questions. But if you guys would like that sort of strategy moving forward, once you see what the hero product is and you wanna ask questions that I answer in the review, we could start doing that. If you would like to subscribe to this month's box, I always have a link down below in the description bar. So if you choose to shop through that link, I thank you very much. Okay, I think that that's like all I have to say about the products. If you have more questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll try and answer. Um, I wanna get through a few other little announcements. So there are some amazing new products in the Beauty Heroes shop that I wanted to tell you about. Namely, they're carrying a brand 
that has been on my radar now for a bit. It's called Anima Mundi. Mundi. Several, I think they're face elixirs. They're quite moderately priced skincare. They have a very sort of like shaman, alternative indigenous medicine sort of vibe, which I really like. So I'm excited to explore some of those products. They're carrying some really cute makeup bags by a brand called Roberta Roller Rabbit. So a makeup case, a toiletry bag, <clears throat> and like a travel makeup bag. They're very, very cute. They're carrying a number of things from Ursa Major, the shave cream, face wash, face tonic, uh, essential face wipes, deodorant. They're carrying a new product from Skin Owl called the Beauty Whip, which is a do everything face mask. So it's kind of, that's kind of how I consider the bean, like a do everything face mask. So I'm curious about that created for all skin types, $68 for two ounces. The August Love More promotion is quite unique and something else I wanted to tell you about in case you wanted to take advantage of it. So every month, Beauty Heroes offers a single gift if you purchase $125 worth of products from the store. But during August only, you can pick one of seven different Love More gifts with your $75 purchase. It's available to members and non-members, and there are different codes for all of these different products. So the Love More gifts are all, I think, past Love More promotion gifts, and you just get to choose which one you want using the code. Laurel Sunbody Oil, Lil Fox Cleopatra Mask, which I dug out and used recently, and I really liked it way more than when I first tried it in the winter, so I just think with like my very... <laughs> glowy oily summer skin it's been working really well Lil Fox Mystic Toning Mist which I finished a whole travel size of and I loved it I kept it at work Kahina Asawuria Body Serum Maya Chia Wonder Balm Kerry Gran Peppermint Lip Whip or the Au Natural Lip Stain in Hero so if you decide you want to do some shopping $75 or more will get you one of those love more gifts I would love to hear from you in the comments what you think of this month's box. I did also get the impression that people were feeling like a little fatigued with Mahalo being in another box since they've been featured two other times. But you know, it's one of those things with beauty heroes where it's like they're never gonna make everybody happy. It's they'll repeat the brand so that people cycling in and out get a chance to try something from a brand if they weren't a member when the other brands were featured. But then if you have people that are never stopping their subscription, then maybe they're going to get fatigued with a brand. So, you know, I don't know. I guess that's what I have to say about it. So thank you so much to all of you for watching. Thank you to Jeannie and Beauty Heroes and Marina at Mahalo. I really appreciate you guys and what you're bringing into the world. I guess I will just talk to you guys very soon in my next video. Bye. Return to paradise